Um, quite a lot, I think. Um, primarily, perhaps, um, not to get into the kind of vituperative discourse um, that has been happening a lot lately, um, sort of debates between militant theists and militant atheists. I'm thinking in particular of sort of the, the debate that's been going on in Great Britain, but also beyond um, with people like Richard Dawkins basically saying science has disproved religion, it's kind of all a load of nonsense, it's all false, um, and you can't really be a modern scientist and, and still believe these things. Um, now, to be fair to Dawkins, I think, you know, if, if you regard religious claims in the way that some religious believers do, namely um, by sort of amalgamating religious claims to ordinary scientific hypotheses, then I think um, Dawkins has a point. I mean, if you think, you know, that, that nothing different is going on in the religious domain to what's going on, um, you know, in science then obviously you ought to be able to provide the same kinds of methods of verification, you ought to be able to provide the same sort of evidence. Um, but, but, you know, as soon as you start thinking along those lines, it becomes very difficult to see um, how you can still be rational and maintain um, those sorts of claims. Um, so, so Wittgenstein's suggestion is it's, it's simply a mistake to amalgamate those two um, different um, things. Religion tries to accomplish a completely different aim um, from what um, modern science is doing. In effect, it's not offering competing hypotheses about, you know, sort of the hidden workings of the world and so on. So, so, so I think what um, Wittgenstein can teach theologians um, is not to get embroiled in that debate by being more sensitive to the differences between religious language and, and ordinary scientific language, um, and, and therefore sort of not, not having to engage in that kind of undignified, uh, militant um, form of argument.